Hey everyone, this is lesson 10.1.2 on completing the square for equations of circles. Uh, prior to this lesson, we went over the equation of a circle and um, we're going to look at that again, uh, except in a different form. So we're looking at, uh, here are a couple things that you need to know going into this. So last uh, lesson we talked about uh, the equation of a circle. This is like uh, the graphing form. You could call this the graphing form of the equation of a circle uh, where I believe I mentioned this really comes from the Pythagorean theorem uh, where the x minus h represents how the circle is shifting, the location of the circle is shifting uh, horizontally and then well, y minus k will tell us um, whether it's shifting up or down so the values of h and k will tell us exactly where the center of the circle is because that's where it's being shifted uh, on the other end we have the radius squared where the radius is represented by the letter r in this case so uh, that's something that we covered last time and you need to be familiar with. So today, in this lesson, uh, we're going to be focused on completing the square, which we've done before with uh, quadratics. Uh, so we're going to try to do the same thing with our circle equations as well. Uh, here is a reminder of how to complete the square. Uh, a little bit of reminder of the shortcut, plus uh, the visual of the tiles. I'll zoom into this as a reminder. So uh, if you're given an equation like this, x squared plus 6x equals to 7, uh, visually if we use the algebra tiles, uh, there's an x squared and there are 6x's in this picture, right? And this equals to 7, right? So exactly what the equation says. Now if I want to complete the square, right, if, if we assume there's this full square that should be here means that there's there's uh, a portion that's missing all right so on on this next step uh, algebraically what we've done is I've drawn in I've drawn in all the little squares that are there and if you notice there's a total of nine missing squares all right so if I want to complete the square I need to add nine so if I add 9 to one side of the equation, I have to add 9 to the other. So the shortcut for this, if we didn't have the picture, if we didn't have the picture, uh, if we take this value of 6 and we divide it by 2, if we divide 6 by 2, then, let me, let me use a different color. So if we take that 6 and we divide it by 2 and then square it, uh, it gives us that 9. So 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, and that tells us what number to add. That way we don't need necessarily the picture. But this is exactly what's happening. We're completing the square. And so since we added 9 to the other side, this gives us our complete square. Right? Our diagram now has a complete square. Uh, this is now equal to 16. And because this is a complete square, we could rewrite this in perfect square form, if you remember that perfect square form, which is x plus 3 squared, right? Because the dimensions of this square are x plus 3 and x plus 3. All right, so when we do completing the square, you don't have to draw the, the tiles or the diagram, uh, but you should remember the shortcut to figure out what this magic number is that we're going to add to both sides. Once you do that, the rest of it uh, will always work out. All right, so let's look at our circles. So on this problem, uh, we're going to look at graphing form and general form. I'm going to zoom into the graphing form portion of this. So here we have our circle, and we have the center of the circle at 3, 1. And we know the radius of this circle is 5. All right, so that's the information we have. Really, and that's all the information we need. We don't even need the picture, technically. 
um, but you should know that the center and the radius are given to you. So definitely make sure you have that written down. So I mentioned earlier about the graphing form. So the graphing form of a circle is given to us as such, x minus h, right, this is an h, and y minus k equals to r squared. All right, so uh, let's plug in the numbers that we do have. And so if we do, I'll zoom into this. So this means we're going to have x minus 2, 3, right, because our h value is equal to 3, and our k value is equal to 1. Oops, let me use the red. So 3 and 1, let me remind you. All right, so now I just have to plug in the radius, which we said was, I believe we said this was 5. And now we have our equation in graphing form. All right, it's that simple. Uh, the next step would be to uh, just write that out or simplify that a little bit. So I'm going to put x minus 3 squared, which I'm going to leave, y minus 1 squared. But now that 5 squared, I'm going to actually multiply that out. And so this is uh, what we're looking for in terms of graphing form. All right. Now, when we're given graphing form, it's nice because it makes it very easy to graph. But just like our quadratics, sometimes it's not in graphing form and sometimes it's in general form. So the question is, uh, here's the general form uh, that we have. So the question is, if we have something in general form, is there a way we could write it into graphing form? Well, in order for us to understand that, uh, we need to see if we could turn graphing form into general form, and maybe we could learn from that. All right, so you'll notice we have our ax squared plus yx squared, right? The x squared and the y squared come first. And then you'll notice we have our x's, all the x's and all the y's first, bx and cy, and then plus d. So in this case, the a's would be the same. Uh, but A, B, C, and D all represent numbers. All right. So let's start with let's start with our graphing form. So our graphing form was x oops, uh, is x minus three squared plus y minus one squared equals to twenty five. Okay. So this is what we're starting with. And what I want to do is use our completing the square, um, well not yet. So what we're, what we're going to do now is the opposite of completing the square is really we're going to multiply this out. So uh, x minus 3 squared, if we want to expand that, so let me highlight this so it's clear on what I'm talking about. So I have, let's say, we're going to focus on this portion, x minus 3 squared. If I actually multiply that out, uh, this would result in x squared minus 6x plus 9. So this would be the same thing. And if I multiply out y minus 1 squared, so y minus 1 squared, if I multiply that out, we're going to be left with y squared minus 2y minus 2y plus 1. And we're still, this is still equal to 25. All right. So you'll notice uh, it's starting to look, it's starting to look a lot like the general form right, because there's a lot more terms. Uh, the only difference is, really, is the order that everything is in. So these x squared and y squared need to come first. So let's rearrange these. Let's rearrange these so that everything's in the right order. So I'm going to have an x squared 
and then there was a y squared. And then I'm going to put the x's next. So there was 6 minus 6 x's, and then the y's come next, minus 2y. And then there's the 9 and the 1. We could combine those, and that's going to give us 10. All right, and this equals to 25. Now the general form, the general form of this says it's supposed to equal to 0. So this equals to 25, which means I need to I need to subtract. So let's subtract uh, 25 from both sides. And after I do that, we're going to be left with x squared plus y squared minus 6x minus 2y. And 10 minus 25 gives us negative 15 equals to 0. All right, so now what we have is uh, this general, general form equation. All right, so graphing form is what we created initially. And then we took this graphing form and we basically multiplied it all out, rearranged it, and now we have a general form equation. All right, so this is what we ended up with, which doesn't really help us a lot. So, but the reason why we just did this is because what we want to do is see if we could go backwards. Can we take this and go straight to graphing form? So now that we know how to do this process, maybe we could do it in reverse order so that we end up with this graphing form. All right, so let's try this. So I have one kind of started for us. Uh, our goal is to take an equation in general form, transition it to graphing form, and we're going to do that by using completing the square. All right. And then we're going to end up graphing this, sketching a, a picture of our circle. So in general form, is it possible to graph it? Well, not really. Right? Unless you're using a, a calculator that allows you to do that, a graphing calculator. But if we didn't have one, then we would need it to be in graphing form in order for us to do this. So let's start this process. And it's kind of, I've kind of set up the steps for us. Uh, we have this equation in, gra in general form. x squared plus y squared plus 4x plus 2y equals to 11. All right, so this is our equation that we have. So if I want to uh, start this process of completing the square, the first thing I need to do is reorganize this. I need to reorganize this, and I need to look for. I need to look for um, all my x's. So in this case, uh, I have an x squared here, and I have a plus 4x here. All right, so that's my x squared and my plus 4x. Uh, and I also have uh, y squared and plus 2y, which I'm going to group together here. All right, so all I'm doing is rearranging this. At the same time, at the same time, what I'm also going to do is I put in, I've put in these extra spaces because I know, uh, I know I'm going to have to fill in the missing number. I, the goal is to find that magic number. So I'm just say getting it set up for us. Uh, I also know that whatever I add to the left side, I also have to add to the right side. So I, whatever number I put here is going to be the same number I put on the right side. Now this equation is already set equal to 11. So that's perfect for us. We're going to leave it there. Uh, and so this is the portion that's, that involves completing the square. So you could either draw the diagram or we could use that shortcut I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the lesson. If I take 4, this 4, and I divide it by 2 and I square it, so 4 divided by 2 squared 
gives us um, our magic number. So let's put four. And the same thing with our y's. If I look at uh, the two and I take two divided by two and I square it, so that's going to be one. One times one gives us one. All right, which means uh, the numbers we're going to add to the other side is going to be four and one. All right, so make sure you get that. So I'm adding four and four to both sides, and I'm adding one and one to both sides. What we've just done is complete the square. All right, algebraically, we just completed the square. Now, how does that help us? Well, x squared plus 4x plus 4 is a perfect square that could be written as x plus 2 squared. All right, if you remember uh, from the visual. Also, from here, if I want to know this number, I just take 4 and divide it by 2. And that gives me that 2. And the same thing with the 2y, if I that 2, if I want to get this number, I just take 2 and I divide it by 2 again, and that gives me the 1. All right, so now I've rewritten this, I've rewritten these into uh, graphing form or perfect square form. And then on the right side, I have 11 plus 4 plus 1, which gives us 16, which this is our graphing form, this is our graphing form uh, of the equation of a circle. All right, so now that we have that, right, that's our graphing form. Now that we have that information, now we, we know enough to graph the circle. So let me ask you this, you tell me what's the center of the circle. All right, so write that out. Uh, make sure you include, always include the parentheses. I put C here, typically we'll use the letter C as center for the, of the circle. Um, but when you write out your coordinates, make sure you include the parentheses and a comma between your H and K value. All right, so let's see if you got this correct. Uh, the center is at negative two and negative one. All right, remember this was, it's the opposite of what we see. So if we see a plus two here, must mean this was x minus a negative two. All right, so that way, that's why it's a negative two. This is y minus a negative one. So that negative one goes there. All right. Second part to this is what's the radius? Remember the general form. And I'm going to give you a hint. It is not 16. All right. Let's see if you get this. So the form, the graphing form, always has, or like I said before, this is like Pythagorean theorem. So this should ha really be the same thing as 4 squared, right? You ha always have to think of how could you rewrite that number so it's some number squared. Um, if you're not sure, you could always take the square root of that number, and that'll give you the answer. So in this case, the radius is equal to 4 all right, so radius uh, center is two, negative 2, negative 1, and radius is equal to 4. All right, that's enough for us to graph this. So let's start with uh, the center of the circle is at negative 2, negative 1. So center is at negative 2, negative 1, which I believe is right here. So this is going to be our center. And if we have the radius, 
the radius is 4. So I'm going to move this over and zoom into this. So I've mentioned this before. This is where you would just count 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right. Uh, and then maybe you could count uh, to the left as well. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Four. So I'm going to put a bigger dot so we know this is the boundaries. This is the left and right side of the circle. And we could do the same thing going up. Uh, one, two, three, four, the top of the circle. And then one, two, three, four, the bottom of the circle. So if you have those four points, uh, that should be the top, bottom, left, and right of the circle. And so your last uh, thing to do would be to... Uh, sketch a circle that goes through those points as best as you can. It doesn't have to be um, it doesn't have to be all in one shot. Let's see if I could fix this. Let's see if I can fix my circle. I think that's all right. So it should look something like this. Um, so this is this is our goal. You should be able to take an equation in general form, rewrite it in graphing form by using completing the square, and then sketch a picture of that circle. All right, uh, we're going to do one more of these, uh, and hopefully uh, after the second one, it'll make more sense. So let's start this over from scratch. Uh, I don't have the steps uh, set up for us, so and the graph. I have the graph kind of set up. Uh, we'll come back to that. I'll, I'll uh, zoom in to just the equation for now. So let's rewrite this equation into graphing form, and then let's sketch it. All right. So this is already in standard form. Uh, you'll notice it's even set equal to zero which means we're going to have to do one extra step here. And let's let me zoom into this. So I'm going to, first thing is I'm going to add three to both sides. All right, so once we do that, Once we do that, we're going to be left with x squared plus y squared minus 4x plus 6y equals to 3. Uh, if you could do that without showing it on paper, that's fine. Uh, I'm just letting, I'm just putting it down there so that you can understand what's happening. If you do that mentally, that's fine. This also could be combined with the next step. And the next step is really to reorganize this so that we have um, our x's together. So we have x squared minus 4x, and we have a y squared plus 6x. So I want to rearrange these so that I have x squared minus 4x together. And then I'm going to put space, and then I'm going to have plus y squared plus 6y plus space equals to three. All right, so now what I've done is I've set it up knowing that I'm trying to fill in this missing number. And whatever I add there, don't forget, we're gonna be adding those numbers to the other side as well. So now, what's our trick? Well, we're going to take uh, this negative 4, so I'm going to take negative 4 divided by 2 and then square it, which is negative 4 divided by 2 squared. This is going to end up being 4, so we're going to add 4. Let me use a different color. Uh, I'll just use blue. So that'll be a plus 4. And then on the y's, let's see if you could tell me this. Um, if we're focused on the 6, tell me what number, what number are we going to add here to complete the square? 
So I already know this number. We add, we're adding four to both sides. But what's gonna be what's gonna be this other number we're gonna add? All right, let's see if you could get this. All right, let's see if you got this. So this I'm gonna take six divided by two and square it. Six divided by two is three. Three times three is nine. So I'm adding nine to both sides. All right, so now what we have is a perfect square. So we're gonna have, this is what we're gonna have. And we can add these together. So seven plus nine is 16. All right, and what's gonna go inside of these parentheses? So x and x, oops, not x, y. So the number that goes here is gonna be half. We're gonna take half of the negative four, which is gonna be negative two. And this is gonna be half of six, which is plus, oops, let me use red plus three. All right, so this is an indicator of what our H and K are gonna be. So don't forget, we took this, I took this negative four, negative, negative four, and I just divided it by two. I just cut it in half. And I took this positive six, six, and I cut it in half, and that gives me plus three. Uh, if you need a reminder of that, look back at at the notes, when I started the notes, I went over completing the square. It's the same idea, um, except really we're just splitting, we're doing completing the square twice, right? That's basically what we're doing. Uh, and one has X's and the other one has Y's. And so you could, should see this is already in graphing form. So here is our graphing form graphing form of our circle. Well, if we're going to actually sketch this, we're gonna need some information. So let me ask you, what's the center, right? What's the center of this and, and what's the radius? So let's try this again. So center is All right, let's see if you got this. This is going to be at two and negative three, All right? Again, it's the opposite of what we see. It's the opposite of what we see in the equation. All right, and then the radius, uh, this is actually the same as uh, the previous problem. So in this case, our radius is gonna be four. Right, because remember this is the same thing as four squared. And so now we know enough to graph this. So let's start by plotting uh, our two negative three, which is ends up being here. So here's our center at two negative three. Uh, we do have a radius of four. So from the center, I'm going to count out four in each direction. So make sure you're careful. Sometimes I miscount. Let me double check this. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then if we go down four. All right. So there we are. So let's uh, connect, basically connect the dots. Don't make the mistake of just going like this. If you go like this. Um, then you're going to draw a square, which is not what we want. So uh, do your best to uh, draw in a curve. Not too bad. All right, so something like that. So here is, and don't forget, it, sometimes it's helpful to even, uh, if you want to even say, oh, there's the radius of four, just so people know. Or you could draw it straight across too.
So you could really draw the radius anywhere. All right, uh, so uh, that is uh, what's expected of you. Can you take an equation in standard form and rewrite it in graphing form using completing the square? So technically you should already know how to do completing the square. All we're doing is doing it twice in one problem uh, and then using that to help us graph the circle. So uh, if you need uh, more help on completing the square, uh, look back at the beginning of the notes uh, where I went over that. Uh, or you could watch uh, the other lesson uh, that I went over earlier in the year on completing the square which I believe was uh, lesson 522 uh, goes over that. All right, let me know if you have any questions.